Good morning, esteemed viewers and followers. Fine TV Gambia, only viewpoint. Um, basically, today we are uh, at the uh, at the University of Gambia Faraba campus uh, to witness a uh, Edusa's uh, convention. As you all know, uh, a convention uh, is a day uh, that is uh, allocated uh, to candidates or giving the candidates, I mean, to uh, I mean, uh, sell out their policies and uh, and programs to the students uh, in order, I mean, to convince students to vote for them. So, uh, as one of the schools uh, at the University of Gambia, uh, which is the uh, the uh, the School of Education, uh, commonly called uh, or known as EDUSA. I mean, there are today is the convention, and of course, uh, we are going to see. I mean, how the convention uh, will uh, unfold today. So, just to remind you, uh, it's fine TV camera only viewpoint. Uh, stay connected as we show you uh, what unfolds here and uh, uh, at the School of Education here at the University of Gambia, for our campus. Um, I am Ibrahim Mbai. Stay connected, and we will show you what unfolds uh, at the program today. Stay connected, fine TV camera. From the Electoral Commission of uh, University of the Gambia, you are welcome. Um, greetings to the Secretary General of the uh, EC Edusa, and greetings to all the commissioners. Um, also, greetings to the Executive Council and uh, the legislative body as well. Um, I welcome you all to this very important um, program. My honored guest, on behalf of the Independent Electoral Commission of the EDUSA, Education Students Association, it is my profound privilege and honor to welcome you all for this momentous convention. Today marks a significant milestones in our democratic process as we gather to engage in the vital process of shaping the future of our beloved Edusa. In my capacity as the chairman of the Electoral Commission, I would like to extend a special welcome to all the media observers that are duly present here. And also, I would also like to welcome all the aspiring candidates who are respectively seated here. Your presence here underscores the importance of um, transparency, accountability, and collective commitment for the Commission to ensure a free and fair elections. As we convey, let us remember that it is essence of a democracy to lies in the power of the choice. The ability of we, the Edusans, to have a voice in our governance. It is a responsibility of the Electoral Commission to safeguard this sacred trust that you embedded on us, ensuring that every vote is counted and every vote. However, the road to this convention has been paved with dedication and hard work by my able team of uh, commissioners. With their countless efforts, I would also like to thank them. I commend all of them, the staff of the Electoral Commission, for their tireless effort in preparing for this event and spirit of constructive dialogue. However, we are going to hear debates from different candidates. And you will also hear their policies and programs. And these policies and programs, I am going to urge every candidate to follow by your policies and programs. Criticisms are accepted, but it has to be constructively, not destructive criticism. 
The Commission, however, will not tolerate any destructive criticism and also will not also tolerate any candidate who is delivering outside your policy and programs. As we embark on the proceedings of the day, let us be guided by the principles of fairness, justice, and the common good as enshrined in our national anthem. Let us conduct ourselves in a manner that honors the trust placed in us by the Ebusans. Once again, I welcome you all to this convention. May our deliberations be fruitful, fruitful and may the outcome reflect the will of the Ebusan people. I thank you all. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I alluded at the end, it's a very passionate uh, Yes, as I alluded, he is very assertive and Normally, he is not carried or easily carried away by emotions or show. But nonetheless, we heard him well. So we are going to move on to the next itinerary. The convention has rules and regulations. These rules and regulations were shared to all the approved candidates some days before or some days ago. Equally, we share the debate rules with them. So, for the purpose or for the benefits of our dear audience, I will be reading the debate rules. Okay, I'll be reading the debate rules for every audience to get it well. Now, when you look at the rules, why the rules is a very important because without rules in anything that we do. It becomes uncivilized, chaotic, and we would not get what we want. We would not achieve what we want. So this is why we have rules for the convention. I'm going to read them out one by one. From there, we we'll start the convention proper. Now we start. We move on. The first rule that we have here is. This one. It says a member of the EDUSA, okay, this one is a general rule, a member of the EDUSA electoral commission shall be the chairperson of the debate that is already being done. The second one is to take part in the debate, a candidate must be in attendance. A candidate must be in attendance. Okay, another general rule. Three, we said no backup speaker for candidates shall be allowed in the debate. I repeat, no backup speaker for candidates shall be allowed in the debate. Four, every candidate shall be given 10 minutes to present their policies or his or her policies with no extra minutes. Meaning, every candidate would be given 10 minutes, but that 10 minutes Will not be exhausted. You will only have eight minutes to present your policies and programs. The last two minutes will be used as a rebuttal because there is a subsection or there is a subsidiary point that will explain that one later. So we proceed. The next one says, out of the ten minutes for policy presentation, two minutes shall be used for rebuttal. Heard that? I already preempted that point. Two minutes shall be used for rebuttals. Meaning you have eight minutes here to present your policy. So the two minutes will be served, will be like a protected time for you to be used later. The next law is, or the next rule is, also there shall be ten, sorry, candidates in the same position shall be given four minutes to ask one question to each other. 
candidates in the same position shall be given four minutes to ask one question to each other. Meaning each candidate vying for the same position will be given four minutes to ask each other. So you'll be given four minutes later, please, after your presentation. The next one says, from the audience, there shall be two questions. Please, let's listen here. From the audience, there shall be two questions for candidates in each position. There shall be two questions for candidates in each position. Right? The next one says, questions from the audience shall be written to the commission for scrutiny before the moderator could pronounce each question to the candidates. This means, if you want to ask a question and you are among the audience, please just pen it or write it on a script. For the commissioners, they will scrutinize the question, whether the question is fit for public consumption before it is publicly read out. Thank you. Okay. Should we continue? Please, for the audience, as I said, if you have any question, just hand it down, submit it to the commissioners, and later they will scrutinize the question. If the question is fit for public consumption, it will be read out. The next is, therefore, questions that are not fit for public consumption shall be nullified. Together, meaning, if the question is not fit for public consumption, the commissioners might decide to nullify your question, which means it will not be read out. The next one is, wherein there are more than two questions, the commission shall use its discretion to choose the best rule for pronouncement. Okay, we have more than two questions or so, we will just identify the two best questions to be read out. The next one says, asking questions is not obligatory upon any candidate. Please, to ask a question, or for the candidate to ask a question is not obligatory. But I think the reasons why we are here is always good to ask questions, otherwise the audience can or could change their minds any time. But the law is telling us it is not obligatory. Please, let's take note. Candidates shall respond to questions in one minute. Meaning, if you are asked a question, please, you only have one minute to respond to that question. There's a reason why they say only one minute. The reason will be stated later. You proceed. Questions shall be limited or restricted to the candidate's policies and positions. Put forward by candidates shall be brief and concise. Meaning, any question that you want to ask, it should be within the ambit of that candidate's policies. It should be limited to the policies and programs of that candidate. You are not allowed to ask any question that is not in line with the candidate policy. Please. And your question... Yes. We are advised to make sure our questions are brief and precise. Huh? Next. Answers given to these questions shall be brief and concise. All right. Candidates may answer questions however they will satisfactory or not. Please, let us listen to this again. If you ask a question and your question is not well answered as far as you are concerned, so I think you just leave it like that. So they are telling us it is not compulsory or mandatory that a candidate must satisfactorily respond to your question as you expected. So they can respond to your question whether satisfactorily or not. But as I said, I know the candidates, they know the effect, the negative effect of not answering questions that are answered okay, properly. Next. Therefore, it is not compulsory upon a candidate to give a satisfactory answer to the question or questioner. So we get that. However, candidates are encouraged to answer questions in the best possible manner. So they are giving us a piece of advice that yes, okay. yes, so they are giving us a piece of advice. Yes, we are giving that leeway, that freedom to answer whether satisfactorily or not, but we are really advised to make sure we answer the question to the best of our ability. And finally, 
during the debate, candidates must refine their speeches in the best way possible. Okay? So your advice to make sure you make your speech because it should be in line with your policies and programs. Okay, we have two more rather. Submissions in the debate shall be limited to policies and issues of the position vying for. So we explained this earlier. All your questions should be limited to what they are touched to do of the legal or the ministerial role. And the last itinerary here with regard to the rules and regulation of this debate is there shall be a timekeeper whose commands must be respected by all candidates and confession delegates. So today our timekeeper is Honorable Abu Anajalo. Wait, then, please. Yes, Anajalo will be our timekeeper. So when your time is exhausted, he would clap. In fact, he would keep clapping. So we are not going to be very lenient with the time, okay, because we don't have much time. We want to be very restrictive and let us all endeavor to adhere to the specified rules identified. Before I move on to the next itinerary, I am notified that the acting dean of school of education, Mr. Hussein Loom, is around, and we want to thank him so very much for coming about the general uh, it's an honor to have him around since it is, it is in absentia of the Dean, Professor Beatrice Jufo. And uh, this will really motivate everybody here that the chief that is around for listening to our policies and programs is going to really add value to what we will be doing today. Now, we are about to start the debate proper or the presentation something hmm? Mr. Lohson, say something yeah yes 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 you're right, right. okay uh, before we start I think it will be advisable we listen to seasoned educators these are people that went to stages they inspired so many lives and they are still inspiring lives. And I keep saying this is an African proverb that a fly with no one to advise follows the course of degree. It doesn't matter the level that you are, we all need advice from someone, you know, that had gone through stories through the stages and so So before we start the program, uh, the program proper, we want to welcome our Dean, that is the acting dean, Mr. Lu, to make a statement, one or two, or show, just to motivate us to do more. Because it will be very good to hear it out, say one or two things. Because it is important to listen to seasoned educators, because they set the stage, as I said, inspired so many, and it's good to listen to them and to have some of their stories. Mr. Lu, you will be glad to have them down. Yes, you can you can come here. Oh. Okay, you can use the mic if whatever is comfortable with you. Yeah, whatever you want, whatever you see. Yes, if you will come here, I'll prefer, then come. Let him. Yes, Good morning. Okay. Uh, my name, as you have heard, my name is Hussein Nurum. And uh, I'm here representing the sitting dean, that's Professor Ajufo. Now, I am a lecturer, but I've been, I'm the former dean of the school. I'm the one who handed over to Professor Ajufo. Now, um, before I start my speech, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the high, high table, students, 
and uh, all and sundry. Now I thank you very much for having me here this morning. But actually, uh, my speech is not going to be a long one, simply because uh, the notification to be here is a very short one. Um, I was notified yesterday, just before the end of the day, and uh, the yeah, and the fact that um, Edusa, I know, has been in this business of conducting elections for a very long time, and now they have mastered all the all the techniques and the rhythmic rules of the game. I am therefore fully convinced that these elections would be a very peaceful and successful election because they have been conducting all along um, free and fair elections which had always ended in a very peaceful manner. So I have no doubt that these elections that we are about to have would end peacefully. Now, Edusa, in, uh, Edusa had always been conducting elections that act as unifying tools for students. Elections are not meant, I mean, student elections are not meant to divide the student body, but are meant to unify the student body. Now, of course, it is very normal that before any elections, especially student elections, there will be different camps. Now, these different camps would each support a candidate or candidates uh, for reasons best known to them. But that is just for the period of the elections. And we always know that immediately after the elections, those camps would all dissolve and the entire student body would become one. So the camps would all melt into one pot and uh, we have a unified student body. Now, that unified student body that had been there before the elections should continue after the elections. And for that continuity to be maintained, there are certain things that must be done. The students have a part to play, and the leaders who have been elected also have a part to play. Now, it is important for the student body to remain unified because it is only through that union that you can have a peaceful mind to concentrate properly on your studies. Now, for the student body to remain in one umbrella, I think the elected leaders, those who are going to be elected in this election, have a very big role to play. And their role can be um, put under two headings, that's honesty is one, and sincerity is another one. Leaders, not only student leaders, but leaders in general, must be honest to their people. Because it is only through honesty that you can lead and lead successfully. Honesty is not only physical, that you see. Um, physical honesty that I'm talking about, um, like you are asked to share things among people, and you say, I'm, oh, I'm going to do it in an honest way. Um, who is supposed to get one, you give him one. Who is supposed to get two, you give him two. And if you are yourself, you are supposed to get one, you take one. That is physical honesty, everybody can see it. But honesty is not just that. You must 
As a leader, be honest in your thoughts. You must have good thinking. You must always be thinking well for those whom you are leading. You must always have very good will and good intention for all those we are leading. Because without your followers, those that you are, you are leading, if you can call them followers, but in this case they are not followers, they are your colleagues, they are your comrades, for them to believe and support your leadership, they must see you as an honest person. They must see you as a person who is ready to help them. They must see you as a person who is going to lead them to where they want to go. Because if they don't have trust in you, they may think that you are not leading them to where they want to go, and therefore they will interrupt your leadership. If you don't lead people, or if you are leading people who don't want you to lead them, I can assure you, you would never be a successful leader. Now, the other thing is sincerity. As a leader, you must be sincere to your people. You must tell them exactly what we are going to do. You cannot tell them it is blue when it is red. You cannot tell them it is green when it is yellow. You must always be sincere and tell them the truth. If you are sincere and always tell them the truth, then they will believe in whatever you tell them. If you tell them, let us run, they will run with you. If you say, let us walk, they will walk with you. But if you are not sincere to them and they don't see you as a sincere person, then of course nobody will listen to you. You can talk the, the sky down, but nobody will listen to you. So leaders must be sincere, they must be truthful, and uh, they must also be honest. These are just few characteristics of leadership, but there are so many. Now, for leaders to, um, to succeed, their followers must also play their role. Uh, the role to, or the task to keep um, Edusa 1 is a task that must be done, but couldn't only be done by the leaders. The um, followers or the student body must also participate in that task. I remember in those days when there was this slogan in Nigeria uh, that to keep Nigeria 1 is a task that must be done. That was Ojuku's time. You know, Ojuku wanted to divide Nigeria, but then the government in, in, uh, am I talking or somebody else, else is talking? If I'm talking, allow me to talk. If you are talking, then let me listen and wait for you to finish. Can I talk now? All right. I was just saying that I remember in those days when there was this slogan in Nigeria. Uh, to keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. That was during Ojuku's time. Ojuku wanted to divide Nigeria into two because he wanted to have his state of Biafra. But the sitting government then said no, that must not be done. They must keep Nigeria one and that was a task that they thought must have been done. And later that task was done. Nigeria was never divided. So it's a task that had been done. But we are saying here that to keep Edusa 1 is also a task that had been done and must not be broken. Edusa had always been one and that oneness must continue. And I have said here earlier on that the leaders have a big role to play in that. And I have told, um, said, or I have um, mentioned some few things that the leaders need to do. Now, but I said that it's not, the task is not just for leaders, but those who are being led. And that is the entire student body. The entire student body 
must also play their part. And one important part that they should play is cooperation. The entire student body must cooperate with their leaders. They must not see leaders as um, just leaders, but they must see them as colleagues. They must see them as comrades. And they must see them as people who are going in the same direction with them. They should support their leaders, take their advice, and if there is any uh, anything they want to implement, of course they have their executive, and if the executive decide on implementing any activity or whatever, we expect the entire student body to follow up. Now, um, you must also, as students, um, understand that UTG is a community, and in every community there are rules and regulations that are set to bring about peace and tranquility in that community. UTG is no exception to that. We have rules and regulations to keep UTG together. Now, those rules and regulations, what I used to tell my students, uh, my students is that I coined them in few words, and that is, keep your hands clean. Uh, I got that from my language. Um, it is said in my language that a child with clean hands can eat with the adults. So, when I ask my students to keep their hands clean, I don't mean to go out to the tap and use water, running water, or whatever. That's for COVID. Leave it with the COVID. But this time, I'm saying that you must tailor your behavior to that of the community. We, as lecturers, are your adults in this community, and you must tailor your behavior towards what the community demands. You must respect your lecturers and all other staff. You must be cooperative. You must be hardworking, and uh, you must concentrate on your studies. Of course, we normally say that all work without play makes Jack a dull boy. But the opposite too is true. All play without work makes Jack a fool. And, uh, you know, I've been teaching here for a long time, and I know those who don't work hard, when the test comes, they look, they look like fools. You can see them at the back, and you can see how they figure, just like fools. Because when everybody is seated, when everybody is writing, and you are fidgeting, you are doing this, you are doing that, trying to spy, having your, how do you call it, long green? Those micros, uh, I, I don't know the, <laughs> the term, but those long things that you can use to, yes. They, they have that in their eyes. They can sit here and see what somebody is writing there and they try to copy it down. So those people, they, to me, they just look like fools. I see them. So what I'm trying to say here is that you must, as a student, um, try to be serious with your studies. Study hard, respect all your lecturers, um, uh, do your work properly, and uh, at the end, you will be successful, and that is what all lecturers like. You know, um, um, I've been, like I said, I've been here for long. There was a time I went to the police station. I had some problem with somebody. And while we are there, the chief, the boss of the police there came with white dress, you know, and holding that small stick, I think inspector or whatever. As soon as he came in, everybody, all the other police rose up, and uh, he saw me, oh, Mr. Loom, and he told them, this is my lecturer. And they all said, ah, ah, ah. so that is what we like. We want you people to come up to be somebody tomorrow so that we can put our shoulders up and say, oh, that was my student. So that is what you want. Please make sure you work hard and uh, you are serious with your studies and uh, we wish you everything. So I wish you a very successful election and uh, I wish you very much. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, thank you so very much for this also the practice of school education. Uh, this is a good yeah, so I just want to highlight one of two things that he mentioned. During his deliberation, he mentioned some of these brilliant attributes of leadership. That a leader must be sincere, a leader must be honest, and a leader must be truthful. I think these are things that really, as a continent, we are still struggling with. We have leaders with brilliant ideas, but when they assume office, I think they easily forget some of the things that they preach. So anyways, as a learning point, let us endeavor to be more sincere, more honest, and more truthful. And equally, he also talked about followers should also play their roles, because it is not one-sided. As a follower, you should also make sure you contribute to help the leaders to execute their functions. A leader cannot propose a very good thing and you keep rejecting or you are not ready to help the leader achieve that goal. So it is what we call more of two-sided or more. And we thank him for that or for those brilliant pieces of advice. Moving on. Uh, before we start the debate proper, uh, I am notified that it's good we allow the parent body of the Rector Commission of the University of the Gambia Student Union. They, uh, we are partners in development or we are partners in these electoral matters. They help us train the commissioners of our commissioners. It is good we give them at least five minutes or so to share you know, their experience with regard to electoral matters or anything related to electoral issue. And on behalf of the UTGSU, that is UTG Students Union Electoral, UTGSU members, that is EC, Bara Shaw would be talking on behalf of them. Bara, welcome to the stage, please. You have five minutes to present. Thank you. In the spirit of constituting a, an individual that will spearhead our activity in the University of the Gambia, I want to thank uh, the EDUSA Electoral uh, Commission for writing to the University of the Gambia Student Union Electoral Commission to invite them uh, to participate and oversee their electoral matters. However, it is the function of the Electoral Commission of the University of the Gambia. Uh, if you read section 69 of the University of the Gambia Electoral Commission, that the Electoral Commission of the University of the Gambia should oversee all electoral matters within the University of the Gambia student communities. So in that case, when they write to us, uh, we deem it very necessary to come over and oversee, not to interfere in the free, fair, and transparency of the electional processes, but to empower that free, fair, and transparency in the University of the uh, sorry, on the EDUSA election precisely. So on that matter, I here speak not my words, but the words of the Electoral Commissions of the University of the Gambia. And once again, on behalf of the Chairman, however, 
he is not present with us here today, but we have the Vice Chairman, uh, that's Suleiman Boja, uh, and also we have the Secretary General, Alpha Manka, present, was present here with us today. We are all here as a family and also to take up our responsibility as stipulated in the Constitution of the University of the Gambia, like I said, supporting in Section 69 under the function of the Electoral Commission of the University of the Gambia. On that note, I want to precisely thank the EC of Edusha, thanks everybody uh, here present, and also want to emphasize the point of understanding election is not crafted to create any violence in any society, but rather it has been crafted to create individuals that will instead be our slave to take up responsibility to bring us development, to bring us peace and tranquility in our society. And of course education, uh, of course the university is not an exception of it. And I want to make this point that our mothers and fathers out there, brothers and sisters out there are observing us. They want to see how we are taking election. And we have a bigger responsibility of in transforming the, the entire political system in the university and likewise at the national level. However, I believe that with the individual present and the kind of mindset coming up now, we will have a better political system and the university and likewise the nation at large. I thank you all and I wish and pray we have a peaceful uh, convention and extend to the peaceful election. I thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, sorry, take the mic. Uh, oh. okay. All right. Thank you so very much, uh, our learned colleague, Mr. Uh, Honorable Baraso, for that deliberation. And I think we all learned something. So we are moving on to the crunch part of today's convention. We want to start now. We want to hear our learned approved candidates, their policies and programs, and of course how they intend to implement those policies and programs. So without much ado, before I call the personality, uh, to be honest, let us endeavor to listen to them very well, so that our questions will be very relevant to what they will be presenting. Yes. So we're going to start with the sport ministry. The sport ministry. That role is on our course. We have only one candidate to make presentation here. And please, the one that is concerned, you have eight minutes to present. The law says ten minutes, but the two minutes will be a protected time. You will use that one during your rebuttal, please. Because rebuttal is very important. They will tell you it is rebuttal that will give you the crown of victory during the days. So, we welcome Honorable Suleiman Baji. Welcome to the stage. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Chairman EC, Commissioners of the Edusa EC, Commissioners from the UDG SU EC, Members of the 13th Executive Council, the Legislative Council, and of course my contestants from different camps, 
And of course, the most important component of this electoral cycle, the electoral is a great reward. I stand before you today, not as an aspiring candidate, but your Minister of Sports in waiting in the next council, the 14th Executive Council. Before going further, I would want to give you a synopsis of who Suleiman Baji is. A man born and bred in Brigama, Misira, did all my elementary schooling in Kabafida. From there, I went to Mindao Senior Secondary School between the years 2008 to 2012, where I sat was. Then I proceeded to the Gambia College to pursue the highest year certificate in agriculture and general science. After qualification, I served as a qualified teacher in different schools across the country. Then I got enrolled in the University of the Gambia in 2020, and I started in 2021. Since then, this man before you here has been serving, has been in service of humanity, and ha will continue to serve the people as far as I am alive. Therefore, I stand before you today as an Edusan, someone who served in the 12th Executive Council in the Sport Minister as a committee member in my fourth semester. I served as the current Deputy Sport Minister in the 13th Executive Council. I am sure that whosoever is here as an Edusan, the man standing before you is not a strange person. The man standing before you is not a strange face. In any activity, in any activity where the name Edusa is, this man's face has been there ever since. Therefore, I stand before you today as your Minister of Sports, who is going to continue serving you and will continue serving you until the end of time. Coming to my policies, I don't need to be brief in my policies because what I have done for Edusa in the 13th Executive Council is enough. But I have to come back. Why do I have to come back? I have a pending work that I need to complete. At this moment, Edusa is in the final. And I have to come back to make sure that Edusa Edusa sporting activities are taken to a different level. But with that, I will remind you that I came under the ticket of Student Service Council. Student Service Council is an acronym of uh, is SSC. It's a team that is formed on three principles. This team was formed in 2021 to bring democracy into Edusa. We know that. There has never been election for a very long time, until 2020. So SSC came to make sure that every individual who is part of School of Education will have the right, will have the opportunity and the privilege to choose leaders who are going to govern them. So this is why my team, which believes in confidence, my team, which believes in reliability, my team, which believes in resource-oriented, this is why they gave it across to me to come as the sport minister to represent them and continue the work that SSC has been rendering in the School of Education. I have a list of policies to begin with. Inclusivity and empowerment. When I say inclusivity, my team was built on three core principles and inclusiveness is one of the core principles. Therefore, inclusivity and empowerment is one of the principles that I want to implement from the next council. I realize there's a growing number of persons with disabilities, or differently able individuals. And these people are not catered when it comes to sporting activities. I cannot remember up to date, since I came to the university, even at the SU level, catering for people who are differently able. So we want to start it in school of education to make sure that these people, they are catered and they feel sense of belonging in the School of Education. We should not laugh at them, but we should laugh with them. 
This is why I want to bring this policy to make sure that differently able individuals are also catered when it comes to sporting activities, which has never been there. If I come in office, come to the next country, this is going to be the first policy that we're going to uh, implement. And I can assure you, I can assure you that I, I am already in, touch, in contact with the people that are responsible. These people, there are games that they play. They have role balls, they have wheelchair basketball and others. You name them. And already, we have someone, I have approached someone who is going to work in my committee to make sure that he will facilitate and bring people with differently able into the activities of the School of Education. We will not discriminate them. They are part of us and they will be in. That is my first policy. Policy number two, sport administration training. Sports administration training. As a train administrator in sports, I man different positions when it comes to sport administration. I am trained by GFF on different thematic areas when it comes to administration. I am trained on the understanding of FIFA Fair Play Rule. I am trained on um, the match commissioning and different areas. So as a sport administrator, I am not here because I am a sportman only. I have the administrative background. So this is why we want to prepare Edusans. We want to prepare Edusans to come forth and take these responsibilities. This position has gone on opposed twice. Last year it was on opposed. This year it is on opposed. And we will make sure that we have candidates who are prepared to battle on ideas before we select them. This position is very sensitive. This is why every individual in the School of Education is going to be great on administrative area to make sure that you have the choice to represent us. Policy number three, partnership. We know that the council alone cannot do all. Sports is very expensive. Sports requires technical knowledge. Sports requires partnership. Even the GIFF, the Football Federation, they have partners that they work with. Why not EDUSA? We have tried last year, of course, we have few responses, and inshallah, we're going to make sure that these partnerships will work. To make sure that the training, the rebranding of EDUSA team, the training, and everything is going to... Is it time? Oh. I finished my two minutes. So can I take that two minutes now? Okay. So you want to move from the question and answer sessions now? So maybe you didn't stand there. Alright. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will do our best to speak in a political revolution earlier. So, yes, as we have a level of faith, he made his presentation that is inaccessible. Yes, uh, it's sort of recommendation. If those are sitting here and there are empty spaces, you can kindly push a man and make sure that others are involved to step in the house space. If there are space to manage those. Okay, we move on. We move on. We move on. It's okay. Let's have a look at they are saying it as peace in the world, it as part of the world. Yes, so we are moving on to the next itinerary, that is question and answer session. I made it clear that is the way we might deliver it to the audience, the conception of rules, that is the debate rules. We said if the audience or the same audience has a question, we can jump it down. Submit to the commissioners, they scrutinize the question. If the question is people of the world, they will be right out. 
So the child is saying she has to receive the question so far. So I don't know whether we will call it the law. Yeah, because the law says it should be pent down and it's so big. That is not wrong. That duration is 10 minutes that they ask for the dog. He is driving down and submitting the one of the and his staff or whatever goes to and body will be ready to respond from the particular staff. Hello, uh, this is why we are going to. The Lord said that every person has to be scrutinized by the electoral commission. If it is fit for purpose. Because some of you may ask a question that is, in fact, out of the person's policy and program. So it's important for the commission to go through the questions thoroughly before they can really answer the goal they ask. Thank you. Yes, we are counting with you. And again, uh, during my introduction of the commissioners, she was not here, she was absent. But I'm kindly stand up so that everybody will see you. She is the vice chair of the Solutor Team. I am not here. And I thank you so much. Okay, we have one question, and it is asked by Amadou Kujabi. It is to the commissioners to us, huh? It reads, what are your plans to bring trophy to Edusa? What are your plans to bring trophy to Edusa? That's not the question. It starts here. Okay. <laughs> In an event. Uh, no, here. All right. All right. All right. All right. No. All right. Thank you for that recommendation. I skipped the introductory part of the question. Uh, I like that. Thank you. Now, the question reads because it has an introductory part. In an event, a Dusa loses this final. In an event, a user loses this final. I don't know what final. What are your plans to bring trophy to a user? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Pujabi, for the question. Uh, I think it is very easy, especially now it is where we are not short of resource persons when it comes to football. We have enough players. The only thing we're going to do is to make sure that we intensify the campaign, we intensify the preparation, and make sure that we motivate the players, bring them whatever necessary materials they need to make sure that we prepare and fight the battle again. And, but let me assure you, today I am telling you this here, that this trophy is coming home. Chair.
Okay, second question. The second question reads, yes, what plants do you have? Let's have the volunteers. What plants do you have to make the Faraba campus a sports, a sports attractive center? What plants do you have to make the Faraba campus a sports attractive center? Is the budget. Thank you very much to whosoever asked this question. And I think making Faraba an attractive sports center is not primarily my responsibility. But you will make sure that the main body, that is the SU Sport Ministry, which where we have our boss, we are going to channel these problems to make sure that these problems go to the council. From the council, it transits to the management. And from the management to wherever it's supposed to go, we will make sure that this is done. Three or two questions? It should be two questions. All right. Yes, so we are trying to abide by the laws. This would be the final question from Honorable Sleman Baji. It reads What are the modalities? What are the modalities as a sport minister? Are you to take to connect with the country's ministry? What are the modalities as a sport minister? UTGSU. And we make sure that our dean is copied and also the vice chancellor is copied. Then we follow the protocols to make sure that there is a connection between these two ministries. I hope the question is answered. Uh, thank you so very much, Honorable Suleiman Baji. Because his role is on a course, he will not have that challenge to ask his opponent or the opponent. if you want to ask a question, if you want to ask a question, you are advised to attach your name. I know some might not like this, but that's what is just being asked for the commissioners. Okay? You can just attach your name. And two questions is what is required from the audience, please. All right, thank you. Welfare and culture ministry. So we are calling names based on uh, alphabets in terms of precedence or in terms of which one comes first. So we welcome Honorable Pinter Aso. Good afternoon to all the NC members. Good afternoon to my great Renaissance. Good afternoon to Team Renaissance. And good afternoon to Team SSD. This lady standing before you goes by the name Honorable Pinta South. <laughs> is somebody who is not new in Edusa. She served, sorry, she served in the 11th Executive Council. She also served in the 12th Executive Council and currently serving as the Deputy Welfare Minister of the 13th Executive <laughs> So this one alone has contested that she is the right person for that ministry. So, Vita So is here to tell you through her policies. First of my policy, is fundraising. 
As you all know that a consist sorry, an executive cannot be run or an association cannot be run in the absence of funds. So when I am going in office, I will make sure that in collaboration with the secretariat, we will write a donor's letter to our partners and sponsors in order to generate funds for the executives. Next on the fundraising also, when I am voting in office, I will make sure that we will be selling t-shirts to Edison's in order to generate funds also. And next on my policy is cultural day. Edison's, I believe that last year was a lesson. Last year, we conducted Students Week, whereas, whereas I was serving as a deputy, we conducted a perfect cultural day during the Students Week. And when I am voting in office, I will make sure that we organize a, student, a cultural day during the students' week, whereas I will divide all the year ones, year twos, and year threes to different ethnic groups because welfare deal with culture, so it cannot be excluded. <laughs> Next on my policy, Edusans, we believe that there is no there is no we believe that there must be fun in Edusa. And in that one, we are not organizing it only to have fun, but we also organize it only, not only to have fun, but also to generate income for the executive in order for the smooth running of the association. And it is this policy number two, that is retreat, organizing the retreat. Last year, we conducted a very successful retreat. And I promise that when I am voted in office, we will revitalize or rebrand the retreat that we have conducted. <laughs> And I believe that last year our retreat was done in a residence. And when I am voted in office, I will make sure that we rebrand it to a higher level. Again, next on my policy is to enhance representation on the face of UTP. Fellow Edisons, as you all know that when it is time for representation, most of us Students of university we lag behind. Thanks for the past years, we have been sorry, we have represented it from the Edusa. But I promise that when I am voted in office, I will make sure that in collaboration with the VP, sorry, the vice president and the secretariat organize a mini face of Edusa so that we can select our representative to go and represent us at face of UT. <laughs> And finally, on my policy, as we all know that Paraba is a place where as food is a problem, right? Food is a point. Food. Now, I promise that that is my policy. Policy number five. I promise that when I am voted in office, I will work with the secretariat in collaboration with the facility manager to facility sorry to. Have access to a or giving a country or cafeteria in sorry in Paraba, whereas we will be organizing food to sell them to Edison's in a cheap price. <laughs> Finally, in conclusion, hello, in conclusion. As our Mr. has said, you cannot be, you cannot stand in front of people and promise them something that you cannot attain. This is why I decided to put my policy into five points because if you look at the duration of the executive council in that, it's less than a year. So I believe that if I am bothered in office, I will make sure that I execute all the policies that I set out here. Thank you. <laughs> And this person's question will not be asked because the person just wrote Junior DC. Who is Junior DC? You must write your full name, otherwise, your question will not be accepted. Yes. We want the text on that. No, it's not approved.
Let's have a decorum, please. It's among the rules of the day that the audience should observe a decorum. Now, we thank Honorable Linda Shaw for her submission. Although she did not exhaust the stipulated time, but we are moving on since she's gone with her presentation. Uh, the chairman made a complaint that some will write a question and they will not write their full name. The one who wrote Genio, Daisy or so, he said your questions cannot be read because we need to know the person asking the question. So we proceed. Yes. Questions? Anything that is approved? Have you received any? Yes. 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 yes, we haven't received any question so far. Is that any question for one of them being that so please submit it to the commissioners? They have to scrutinize your question before it is publicly read out. The one with that junior dicey, please. You are advised to write your name. Why not be allowed to open it to come before you welcome questions? Yes. Yes. Is it approved? Can I do it that way? Yes. I do it that way. Ask those that are the questions. They are the questions to bring us over you are Okay. Since time is very precious. We are trying to change one or two things. If you want to ask a question, because we have two people vying for this role, that is Culture and Welfare Ministry. We don't want to waste time in the question and answer sessions where we don't have much or many questions. So if you want to ask questions to either of them, just write your question and write the person to whom it is directed to, please. So we want to welcome the person that is also vying for the same role that Binga is vying for, so that we go later when the Binta's opposition or Binta's uh, start rival is gone, then we will come to the question and answer sessions. Please, we want to do it that way. So, without much ado, Binta, you can kindly have your seat. Can we give her a round of applause? Please? Yeah, so we don't need to waste more time. Can we welcome? Yes, no, you wait when the five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. When they do not finish their time, it's not our concern. Yeah, and also when they start talking, as time goes on. Somewhere completely. We'll give it this time to the mic. Hmm? So that they can hear you. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, please. We move on. Can we welcome Honorable Fatu A. Turi? Before you find the president. Fatu A. Turi. Please welcome. Yes, as I said, please, you can start writing your question and direct it to whoever you want to ask. In minutes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the EC, aspiring candidates, great students of this noble institution. Um, students of the sister school here present, I greet you all. My name is Fatu A. Ture, an aspiring candidate for welfare and culture under the camp SSC. 
for my motor stamps, in order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different. I am different, dif and that difference comes with new innovations for a better editor. I will give a brief description about who Fatu Eture is. Fatu is a young girl born and brought up in Birkama, where she attended her schooling in presentation of her primary and basic cycle school. Graduated in 2016 and then enrolled in the Gambia College 2016 and graduated in 2019. Fatu is passionate, kind, patient and sociable, which zeal her both for the right candidate for welfare and culture. Being a socialist, Fatu established and founded an organization called Sharia al Iman. I have five policies and programs which I will deliver to you today. These policies entitled fundraising and seeking donations, excursions and tours, Edusa Week, Edusa Week, and Edusa Choir. Fundraising, if I am elected as your welfare and culture minister, which inshallah I will be, I will initiate make and sell. I will initiate learn and sell which every student in the school of education and the sister school will come and buy food and even generate funds for the association. In collaboration with the Honorable Minister, I will seek donations from greater Banjo areas and NGOs for the organization. Excursions and tours are believed to be fun, but in my ministry, excursions and tours would be of boosting self-confidence, diverse in culture, and stimulating what our self-esteem is giving back to the society, not only but for the fun, but also to learn in the process. Edison Week, we all believe that Edison Week is all about culture. But then again, I will organize seminars wherever every individual student of education will participate, be it English major, mathematics, Islamic, Differently, everyone will all come together, share your opinions, your challenges, and these challenges or problems will be channeled to the right authorities and it will be looked into. Edison Week is not just going to be a forum for us, but also a learning process, like I always say. Introduction of Face of Edusa. We all believe that in the uh, Face of University, it is randomly picked up and we go Arabic said. But when Face of Edusa is established, We'll have a face of Edusa in our school will generate fun and also the winner of face of Edusa will represent us in the face of UTG. And which I Fabi Eture will represent the face of Edusa in face of UTG. <laughs> there is no program without a welcome song. There will be a boring program. Obviously Edusa choir will come. And then songs will be displayed to you. Entertainment will be done. Then we proceed to our program where our problems will be channeled out. Edusa Retreat. As it is mentioned, Edusa Retreat will come, dance, have fun. But this Edusa Retreat will be in grand style where every Edusa, not only Edusa, but all sister schools in the university will be of great honor to attend this Edusa Rutrik, and it will be one of the most outstanding Edusa Rutrik ever.